This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Rising Tide Startups, and my guest is of the same name, Kevin Carrillo. Kevin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Kevin. I appreciate it. <laughs> Good to have you. Good to have you with us. And uh, we had to reschedule our interview based on on the issue was on my end, but I really appreciate you staying in the staying in the game and and uh, picking another date that works out in your schedule because I really wanted to to interview you, and I'm just anxious to hear your backstory. No problem. Thank you for again reaching out. I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> so give me a give me a short bio. Who is Kevin Carrillo? Sure. Um, so I grew up, was born and raised in uh, in New Mexico, mm -hmm. just outside of Albuquerque. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful area. Um, lots of mountains and whatnot. And so um, my my background primarily growing up was um, in athletics. So I wrestled since I was five years old. So, um, you know, wrestled, won a few state championships in New Mexico, and then I was recruited to actually your area in the Northeast at Bucknell. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and so I, I wrestled there for one year. I don't say that I quit. I use the word retired after <laughs> one year. Um, but, uh, no, it was good. You know, after, after the, uh, the athletics, I really got into focusing on what I wanted to do um, with my life. And I always had a, a passion for communications and for marketing mm -hmm. and whatnot. So I kind of started my career path um, going. I did a domestic abroad program while at Bucknell, but I went to American University for a semester. And I was in the program of journalism there. And so, you know, firsthand I got to uh, visit various media outlets and publications like the Washington Post mm. and. Um, you know, the New York Times and Al Jazeera. I mean, you name it, we went and visited and kind of met with those editors and learned firsthand what their processes were. Um, I, while I was there, I learned a lot there, um, but I quickly realized that news was not where I was going to be <laughs> just because, um, you know, how, how fast paced the nature is and how, you know, people are just scrambling, get the story out, be the first ones. And right. I, I really like to lean more on the strategy side. Um, so, we had a little bit of blip there. Tell me where the internship was again. Sure. No, that it was at um, NBC Washington. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, it was a great opportunity. I learned a lot from the reporters there, Tom Sherwood in particular. Mm. Um, but after that, I, was, I thought, you know what? I want to get more into marketing and have a little more time to strategize various campaigns and, and messaging announcements and things like that. So naturally kind of social media became a fit for me so after college um i got a job with dell services in plano um i think they've sold that business off now and, and ntt data now owns it um but while i was at dell services i uh, was a social media manager there so um you know dell overall is very established in social media uh, down in round rock so i was able to work with those teams and their resources and kind of build out the program uh, within services what year was that that was from 2011 to 2013 that was still fairly early days from uh, even in the social media space i mean uh it was it was around but i mean there were still companies that were like that's nah, just a fad you know we uh, we're, we're not going to spend a lot of time or bandwidth in in that space so what exactly. how how has it changed give me give me kind of one or two things that have changed dramatically from say 2000 from that time to now from a social media standpoint sure yeah no you're absolutely right in, in its infancy that time especially in the b2b space right? right um so i'd say what's changed the most that i've seen in the workplace at least is the structure and the process and, and i guess the focus on social media now like you right. said before it was like, hey, go let those millennials play with social media and That's let's right. get this. It's this not even a real job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now that companies are reporting financial uh, statements or if they're coming out with major company news or announcements or if they just want to showcase their brand and, and recruit new employees, right? right. Um, social media is a channel for that. And I've, I've seen the, the, the shift in, in leadership and executives and uh, them seeing the importance now of it and the impact it can have. So the first time an executive comes to you and says, hey, could you help me with that face space thing? 
You think <laughs> you obviously know know nothing about social media, so you just mixed your metaphors there. It doesn't. Yeah, you you you're automatically disqualified. So right. The so, the one statement that I would always kind of chuckle at would be, "Listen, we got this big announcement coming. We need it to go viral." <laughs> so, Don't we all? Be, do you have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, or is this? you know, groundbreaking announcement that we're going to make, yeah. you know what I mean? That's going to impact most or the majority of people. So <laughs> needed to go viral. Yeah. I need to talk to you later. Cause I want rising tide startups to go viral and I don't have $250. <laughs> so, you know, you just, you're going to have to make some magic here. So, right. so tell me a little bit about what you're doing now and give me some background and maybe the elevator, elevator pitch of your company. Sure. Um, so uh, after Dell, I went to Sabre, did social there, and then I moved on to AT&T Small Business Solutions. And that's where I really started to see, because we were interacting firsthand with small business owners and whatnot, and I got to see firsthand the, uh, the challenges and just struggles that these, these entrepreneurs face on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean... Um, it's, it's a lot to just go out and even say, look, I'm going to, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to, I'm going to move forward with this idea or concept that I have. So that's huge. But then also all the hats that you're wearing also, right. you know, um, and for the most part, if you're a, a sole founder, you know, you're responsible for setting up the business. You're responsible for managing the day-to-day -day operations. You're responsible for marketing. You got to be a salesperson. Um, so I was just fascinated by the type of person that can do that but and then also be successful right mm -hmm. with the limited resources and tools that we have and I say limited I mean there's information out there but you got to find it right you got to right. go out and you got to do your research so that's really what um, drove me to and, and made me passionate about what I'm currently working on and what I've launched as an MVP which is BizTrack okay so what BizTrack is, is it's basically, it, it provides step-by-step -step guidance for people that want to set up or manage their business. So um, what I mean by step-by-step -step is we have various tracks. We have a setup track, we have a managed track. Mm -hmm. And within those tracks, there are 10 to 12 basic steps that we've, that I've researched, my team's kind of researched where we think chronologically you should take these steps in this process to start or manage your business. So, for instance, in the setup track, step number one is conduct market research. Yeah. Right? Before you put any money into, uh, you know, formations, LLCs, um, setting up your business, first look at the market and even see if there's a demand for it, or right. if you even have a chance. Right. If if there are competitors out there, um, and it's going to be hard for you to break through with with their history or their legacy mm -hmm. in that market. Um, you need to be aware of that. So that's just kind of an example of the steps you should take before spending money, losing money, um, and or being penalized for, you know, taxes or things like that because right. you filed correctly, right? I mean, isn't it, isn't it great though? Just the, I mean, in your relatively young life, I mean, just the steps that you've taken, you know, whether it's you know, start your, from wrestling to Bucknell to American University to NBC to Dell to, uh, you know. I've, forget that other companies in AT&T, so small business services or whatever, that everything has, has like worked as a mosaic to put you in the position that you're in today. I mean, you can look back and, and actually take pieces from virtually everything I mentioned that you're putting into practice today. And, and I mean, it's not even a stretch to go back and think of the discipline of, you know, making weight as a wrestler, you know, um, just the, the whole idea of changing your diet you know, the, the night before you're the way in, you know, you, you're wrapping yourself in cellophane. I mean, I, you, know, you know, you know, the world. Yeah. So, I mean, just the, the crazy stuff that wrestlers have to go through. I mean, in university, I, I had wrestlers on my hall, so I saw the crazy stuff they went through. My son actually wrestled in high school, but just okay. the whole idea of, of this, you know, weight thing. But I, the basic point is just, you know, all these things pointing to, you know, the culmination of what you're doing right now. And we may we may talk in five years and it may be a, another iteration of something else that BizTrack, you know, maybe feeds into. But right. I just think it's really cool to just to be able to see the steps, you know, that, that you described in a very short period of time, but just culminating into, into what you're doing now. No, you're you're absolutely right. And I mean, wrestling helped in terms of teaching you discipline, mm -hmm. teaching you drive, 
Um, cause like you said, there's weight management, right? There's, there's things that you ha- yourself have to be accountable for that no one else can, can help you with. You have to control that. But in addition to that, I mean, it's really the people that I've met along the way and that have supported me, right? Yeah. I mean, whether it's former bosses, uh, at the various companies I worked at or, or even coworkers mm-hmm. that I worked with to my personal life, my close friends, my girlfriend, my family, my parents who have been super supportive yeah. throughout the years. Um, so I've been very fortunate in that sense for sure. Yes. So when did you start BizTrack? So I've been working on this project, um, for over, just over two years now, but we actually officially launched our minimum viable product, which is a website, Mm biztrack.io. Um, that's live now. You can sign up and register that launched on February 1st of this year. Okay, I want you to clarify this for our, for our audience because I went to that site and it it looks almost like a subscription, like you have the the initial page is like a login. Mm-hmm. So if our listeners go to biztrack.io, it's b i z t r a k dot i o. B i z t r a c k. Okay, c k dot. So what would they do when they got to the site? Would they create an account or? Yep. You so you'd create an account, and basically what that does is it creates account for as an entrepreneur, right? So once you just kind of give basic information like your first name, your email, um, and just sign up, that's your login credentials. Basically, you have access to all of the information that we have researched and compiled into one repository. So um, I talked about the the steps briefly, mm-hmm. but. Um, when you actually click on a particular step, so let's take uh, pay taxes, for example, um, we offer six different items. We offer a helpful overview. So it's basically a paragraph or two of why this step is important and right. what you should look out for. Um, the second is helpful as resources, so third-party resources, whether it's an article, a video from YouTube that got a lot of hits um, that talks about that step. Mm-hmm or even guides or whatnot, right? We link off to that stuff. Um, The third is the uh, tool. And so, especially within like social media marketing and marketing, there's a ton of online tools that are free. Uh, You know, to name a few, um, Canva's not free, but it's a a minimum fee, but basically, Mm It's your own, you know, graphic design studio right. where you can quickly create, you know, social media graphics and whatnot. There are, actually is a free, the, the light version of Canva is free because I, I've used that to do, you know, some of my own, like my own logo or the, the Rising Tide startups, you know, right. kind, Which of, is kind awesome. of icon. Oh, so. I like it. Yeah. I had my, my ninth grade daughter did that. <laughs> so, yeah, she's got a she's, future. She's got a future ahead. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and so the, the helpful, the tools, helpful resources, we've got recommended business partners. So that's where I'm working directly with, um, businesses like GoDaddy, LegalZoom, mm-hmm. right. Cox Insurance, Trinet HR. So, um, we have an affiliate marketing relationship with them. So right. basically when a user clicks on, on their, you know, learn more, they're directed to their page. And then if they convert, then we get a commission sure. or we get a referral, sure. right? So, so that's kind of how we're set up for revenue right now. Um, the others are downloadable documents. So if there are PDFs or white papers that are out there that, that you can download, um, we link to those. Right. And then the last is estimated costs. So um, how much, if I wanted to pay an, an attorney, would it cost to form an LLC? You know, And we kind of break down those costs by state. Um, if you want to do it yourself, what the filing fees would be for mm-hmm. this area state and things like that. So... So is that a subscription based model on initially like if I if I sign up or if a, one of our users or listeners sign up is there a subscription base for that service or is it only if you do the add-on services No it's all free there's okay. no subscription so all you need to do is just register mm-hmm. and then once you register you have full access to those tracks that I mentioned okay. with the steps Okay so but other than affiliates I mean what are, what's your some other revenue streams that that are through that. I mean, you have coaching streams, you have, you know, we'll, we'll do consulting. We'll do, you know, if you want to take any of these to the next level, we'll talk about, you know, how to monetize or how to, you know, pay for those services. So what's the other than, cause affiliate links, I mean, they're good, but they're hard to make a full time living, especially with a team, you know, just based yeah. off affiliate links. So you're absolutely right. Yes. So the, the goal for this MVP really wasn't 
um, and it's going to sound kind of crazy. I mean, we weren't really focused on revenue mm -hmm. to the most part. We know that this thing is going to generate revenue in the future, but we really wanted to hone in on what the, the big pain points were for entrepreneurs. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so since we've launched in February, we've been, we've been getting feedback. I've been meeting with various entrepreneurs, small business owners and, and having them try this out. But to answer your question, um, when we are positioned to build out, you know, phase two or, you know, get that investment to where we really build this thing out, um, the, the revenue opportunities are exactly what you, what you said. We could have a free version for users that sign on, mm -hmm. but there could be a premium version right. um, where we add some BI and some, uh, some, some AI technology within each step. So think about um, when it comes to conducting market research, there's various methods of market research. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't want our users to jump out of that step if they have a particular question that they want to type in. So we would include a search box that says, you know, what's the best method of market research when it comes to X, Y, or Z, right? right. Yeah. And we would then feed them that info. And, and the plan of how we're going to do that is we already have partners with, for each step or for the majority of these steps. And our, our business partners are getting those questions probably on a daily or weekly basis, right? Mm -hmm. They have their own blogs. LegalZone has their own blogs and yep. whatnot. So we would just basically grab that info and then serve it up as people are asking for it. Um, that would be one, one area of revenue. The other would be if we hit critical mass with our user base, which you know is ideal, that's where we would charge various ad placements for the partners, right? right? So right. Sponsorships, banner, yeah. Yeah, banner mm -hmm. ads. Or if you wanted an exclusive placement, like say GoDaddy wanted to be the only uh, recommended business partner for website domains, mm -hmm. you know, they could pay a premium and uh, maybe for the year we are the only ones that are recommending to them. Right, you know, right. That way. Yeah. Um, the third and final is, is more of a, on the investor side. So over time, as we have all of these up and coming startups and businesses within our website, we could also, um, charge our, um, investors a subscription just to view those, yep. you know, startups by industry or right. by status, um, and reach out to them. Cause I don't know right now if there's really an effective way for investors to find, the next Facebook or the yep. next, you know, there's angel list and other sites, but they're very cumbersome and it's mm -hmm. hard to kind of navigate through those sites. So right. that would be another opportunity. And I mean, and your, your community would be more clearly vetted, I would think than, than say a kind of a more broad angel list type listing or whatever that, you know, you know, who's coming to your, your community. They've given you some background information. There may have been some interaction with them within the community. So you would probably know them better, you know. If I was a if I was a VC, I would I would want to know that information to have a little bit a little better back, you know, kind of track record, you know, somebody that that uh, a little more backstory, I guess. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So tell me, since I mean, you started this, you you've worked on it for a couple of years, but you really launched in in February. What would be, what are the say the one or two biggest pain points that you think you've encountered so far in kind of the 1.0 version or, or what, are you, what are you trying to overcome? I mean, I know you're still very much in kind of the MVP, you know, phase, but is there one or two things that have really stood out that you thought, man, I don't know how to overcome these, these things that maybe our listeners can speak into? I mean, I've been fortunate in the sense that I have a really good business partner. It's not just myself. I have, there's another guy I'm working with. His name is Robert Moss. Um, we actually knew each other back in high school. He's from Michigan. We wrestled at uh, the same tournament one time. We met, became friends, and then mm. he actually ended up going to UNM and moving to New Mexico where he met his, his uh, wife now. But um, he's a former tax attorney turned CPA. Um, so he's got both the legal background and the accounting side. So, I mean, right off the bat, I'm throwing that out there because that's a huge pain point for most small yep. businesses yep. and entrepreneurs starting out, right? So I was fortunate enough to, to have his expertise and lean on him for those things. Um, I'd say on, on my end, um, the, the biggest pain point, and this is going to be probably really common, but it's, it's been the funding. It's been um, trying to meet the right investors or early stage VCs mm -hmm. to, uh, to understand, um, where we want to go with this thing and then, you know, get buy-in from that. Right. There's, right. there's a lot of VCs and, and investors that are out there that are helping, 
but they, they have their niche, they have their focus areas. And so um, that's really what I've been focused on since we've launched is just networking, going out, pitching, um, doing podcasts like this mm-hmm. where you know, it's, been, it's great to just be on, on your show and to communicate what I'm doing. But um, it's really, I think, just connecting with the right people to help you move your, your product or your service to the next level. Right. What about in the community building space or, you know, what are some of the the obstacles or hurdles that you've encountered so far? I mean, as you're trying to build your community other Um, than just growth. Yeah, well, right now, because we're so broad, um, there's a lot of challenges and and issues that these small business owners are facing. Right. So Mm -hmm. um, gathering that feedback, but then applying it to the service that we're offering but making it in a way that's usable for the majority, right? Right, right. So I see this thing eventually. We get very niche into industries, you know, uh, AI, 3D printing, drone consulting, drone mm-hmm. businesses. There's a lot of compliance and, and regulations in yep. those various industries. So what our, my ultimate goal is to, to get so good at setting up and managing your business within each of those industries where – they have their own kind of personalized experience once they tell BizTrack where they're at or what they want to do with with their business. I don't know if, if uh, you've had a chance to look back or not, but I, I think it was about episode maybe 10 or 11. I interviewed a, a, a drone videographer, and it's a great interview to go back. I, I encourage you to go back and listen to it. Yeah. It's a guy in Nashville that is just, I mean, he, he taught me so much. I, I knew I knew less than zero about about that space when we started talking, but he was so engaging. And he's got a really inter- interesting story about a, about a flight on a plane where they had a, a catastrophe, too, that's kind of halfway through the interview, I think. So, but I would encourage wow. you to go back and listen to it. That That is really a... Uh, it's, I mean, you just, it's interesting. You mentioned, you know, the d- drone space because he would, he would absolutely, uh, agree with what you said. I mean, that was actually, that was one of his pain points was just trying to keep up with just the changing regulations, you know, FAA and other, you know, regulations that, that kind of dictate how they operate, you know, in a very niche, you know, business, but, um, right. I'll definitely check that out. Yes. <clears throat> it's Thank a, you. That's a great interview. So, um, so if I, I mean, as you were talking, I, the thing that kind of struck me, like I was trying to put myself almost in, in a VC, in my, my VC hat on, and I'm thinking, okay, you, you're you talking in terms of, you know, we really haven't focused on kind of the revenue model early because we're really kind of trying to just build the, the kind of the MVP product or whatever. It, that almost looks like it's it's there's a contradiction in terms there. You know, you're looking for funding. If I'm a VC, I want to I want to hear you clearly articulate how you're going to make money. And you're like, well, but we're actually too early because we need to kind of refine the model before we figure out how to how that we're going to generate revenue from that model. So is that is that another thing that you kind of encountered when you if you've talked to anybody about funding or. Um, have those questions come up as you, you know, talk to some angel investors or VCs or, you know, potential, you know, funders of, of your, of your project? Yeah. So we, we do have a clear vision. Let me, let me, um, clarify. We do have a clear vision on how we're going to make money. Uh-huh. But the idea is so broad mm. and there's so many different components and variables that, um, what we've been told by early stage investors and private investors is, all right, we'll just get an MVP built, get some type of prototype built with the money you do have, and then prove the success of that, learn the findings, and just like any business, you'll pivot, right? Or right, you'll have exactly. To, you'll have to change your model because, you know, over time, if for the most part, you're not always going to be doing what you set out to do. Mm-hmm. You're going to see the market demand and you're going to have to adjust in that way. And so that's where we're at right now. Um, from the learnings, the, the the findings and gatherings that we've seen within website analytics, what people are clicking on and whatnot, we have a pretty clear understanding of what they're interested in from yeah. a setup and from a managed standpoint. So the difficulty and the challenge on my end now, without that product being built, is to convey that to an early stage investor or a private investor who is getting blown up and hit up every day by everybody wanting their money. Right. right? Yeah. So um, it's 
we did go about it trying to learn because again, this is, I mean, there's 546,000 businesses that start every month. Wow. And if you look at the, the statistics, we all know, I mean, after the first year, I think it's like 90% are surviving. And what I mean is surviving is just, they're still operating. They're not generating revenue. They're not making big money. They're just, they haven't given up yet. So there is a lot of learnings and findings within that in itself because the numbers are so staggering. Um, and so the feedback I get from investors is, is either, man, you're, you're, you're going for the moon here. You know what I mean? And this is, but you know, I don't see it that way. Uh, there are websites like TurboTax yep. that, you know, tax paying taxes from a business standpoint or a personal standpoint is very complex mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're doing. Yep. And TurboTax provides that guidance, that step-by-step -step instruction right. for you to do that. Another example is the knot, the knot for weddings. There are a lot of moving parts and variables when it comes to getting married, mm -hmm. right? I mean, from flowers to event, a venue to food, and so that's another kind of systematic way where the knot has addressed that issue and helped couples navigate through that. And that's the same thing that we want to do with starting or managing your business. Yeah. And there's nothing like that today. Um, the closest entity that I've seen that's doing what we're doing is the SBA, the Small Business Association. They have a business guide, but of course, from a government standpoint, they have regulations. They can't you know, promote the private sector. They can't show favoritism that way and whatnot. So that's where I think we can come in and be the pinnacle of entrepreneurship by bringing all these parties together, mm -hmm. whether it's business providers, whether it's entrepreneurs, um, whether it's investors, you know, advisors, mentors. You know, we want to eventually get to a point where advisors are uploading self-generated content. Right. If they have their own blog or their own video, why not upload it to our right. site? You know, right. and it promotes their their business too through that site. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Just our mission is to be actionable, right? right. There's a lot of uh, news out there for entrepreneurship, but it's it's a lot of fluff stuff. It's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, five ways to start your business. will be healthy. You know, uh, eat <laughs> get up well. early. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I've read them all. I wrote some of them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'd, let me ask you one one quick follow up question, then I want to dive a little deeper, kind of in the the sure. final, get in your head a little bit at the near the end of our interview here. But um, so you've mentioned you mentioned uh, kind of this broad base of you know providing service for the kind of the business startup sector or the 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 entrepreneurial sector. So there are, there are always two schools of thought. There's one that says you know obviously you have to go broad when you're when you're you know early because you have to have a you know a wide enough customer base to generate enough revenue to survive. The other school of thought says if you go broad then you become a master of nothing. You know you're just average, you're mediocre at everything, and you you you've got to niche down till actually niche till it hurts and then niche again. You know because like, it's kind of like the old losing weight. You know cutting weight to, to, to get into the, you know, your age or your, your weight range of, of wrestling. But so what do you think? I mean, is it a balance of those two or I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if you look at those two schools of thought, what, what's, what is your mindset going into kind of developing biz track? I mean, where do where do you think you fall in those two schools of thought? I, I see it as, um, as a way to hone in, uh -huh. right? Um, we, we are, we're, we're going big in the sense of the two tracks, the, the, the setup and the manage. Um, and there's a lot within that. I mean, there's companies that specialize in accounting only. There's right. companies that, that specialize in marketing, right? And we're not trying to reinvent the wheel and become experts in all those fields. I, right. I'm not general. My plan is not to generate content and create a blog and yep. have writers and people because that content's already out there. Mm -hmm. As we know, there's so much data out there already that you can find that stuff yep. if you apply yourself and you take the time and the effort to do it. What I am, am noticing, even in my own personal experience, is that time is very valuable. But I think what's more valuable than time is your energy. Mm -hmm. And that might be a different viewpoint than what other people think. But I, in, in my mind, the energy that I'm going to put into something and really give it my all is very, very important. And do I want to spend my time 
researching for four hours of, of you know, how to be this or, or looking for tools or whatnot. And so what the main purpose of what BizTrack is is to bring all that together and make it very simple, a one-stop shop right. for somebody that, okay, I've completed this step. What's the next step that I have to go to? Mm -hmm. What what should I think about now or who can I talk to that's out there? Because there's a million providers, right? There's right. tons of different providers in various segments. But the more that we can just – feed and you know basically serve this with a spoon to these people and say look don't waste your time and energy on that other stuff because we've already done it for you yeah you come in and do what you do best um whether that's the sales whether that's you know being the ceo of your company whatever it is but let us take take care of the other research and the and the time that it takes to do that stuff that i i mean i love that model i mean it's it's almost like you know, kind of weeding through the, the dross that's out there and trying to curate the very best, kind of the best practices in each of these sectors that you talked about. And and so when I come to BizTrack, you've already kind of weeded through this for me. I mean, I could do it, but it would take forever. And, and I mean, I would probably, you know, you probably have more expertise in weeding through what's, what's you know, good content versus bad content, what's useful versus not useful what's correct versus incorrect. I mean, just the whole with your, you know, your, you and your team are doing this virtually for me as a, as a, exactly. you know, business startup. So what a, what a valuable, valuable resource. So thank you. Let me, let me shift real quick as we're kind of, you know, winding down at the, at the end of our interview here, but I just want to kind of get in your head a little bit more and tell me one person online that just really inspires you. One person. other than your podcast host. So, you know, it's <laughs> there's a lot, um, make it hard on you. I would say Elon Musk. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and one example why is he is the epitome of entrepreneurship. And I say that because not only with what he's doing on the innovation side, SpaceX, Tesla, right? Mm -hmm. We know all that, but his work ethic and his determination. I mean, I think he tweeted the other day that he's sleeping in the warehouse of like the new SpaceX development, right? Like he's not even going home to sleep in his bed. He's he's there grinding it out every day. And uh, um, my dad always told me growing up that if you have to tell everybody how good you are and how you know you're not that good because mm. it, it it will come. Yep. If you're an expert in your field or if you're a good wrestler or whatever, people are going to talk for you. You don't have to do that. And I think that Elon Musk does a good job of that. You know, one thing you mentioned earlier that you just kind of glossed over and, and that I've never heard on my inter in, on all of my interviews I've done, you said, oh, I won a few state championships. <laughs> I mean, you're even talking in multiples. So you, you you said that just so flippantly, like, yeah, I won a few state championships and yeah, they full ride. But yeah, those, yeah and I'm thinking, wow. Yeah. So that, there, that you shared your humble side there. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. You got to be. Yeah. So. What's uh? What is one like life quote? What's a kind of your mantra, your one line thing that you kind of go? It's, it's your go to is as you're trying to inspire yourself. You wake up every day, get out of bed, and you know be focused. And so, what is one that that you would say this is really driving me? The will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. Who said that? I have no idea, <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure it was a, a coach or something, but my dad would tell me that growing up. I, I don't want to say my dad quoted that, but um, he would kind of reinforce that. Um, you Sounds know, like whether, John Wooden or Vince Lombardi or somebody like that. I mean, that's, that's it might be Vince Lombardi. Space. Yeah. Yep. I mean, what a, what a sage. I mean, it, so the will to win is not nearly as important as the will to prepare to win. So that I would say in general overall, and then there's one more quote for entrepreneurship uh -huh. specifically, and this may sound radical, but the Marines say this, everybody wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that for entrepreneurship because, I mean, everybody wants to be their own boss. Everybody has a great idea, right? Everybody wants to change, or the majority of people want to change the world, but do you do you really have what it takes to 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 make give those sacri you know make sacrifices to to go broke at some point to be a, you know what i mean to um there's a lot of different things that come with it 
And um, I, that, that quote stuck out to me, too, from the Marines. Wow. Well, Kevin, I, I could, uh, man, I'm, I could talk to you all day long. I, I, it's been a very engaging interview, and I, I just really appreciate your time. Is there, I know, I'm going to ask you just a minute how people can find you online, what's the best way, but is there anything that, that I just want to give you the space right now? Is there anything that I haven't asked you about specifically that you want to share with our audience you think would be, you know, would, would feed them? I just, I just want to thank you again for the opportunity to be on your podcast. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think that what you're doing for startups and, and giving you know these small business owners or these entrepreneurs a platform to, to share what they're working on and what their passions are is excellent. We need more people like that because um, that's what's driving innovation in this country today. And uh, yeah, it's it's hard for this old dog to stay stay current on tech. I, but I, I'm doing my best. So <laughs> doing, doing my best. Great job. Doing a great job. Um, so and how can I, people find you? So um, I'm I'm on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, my Twitter handle is Kevin L Carrillo. Last name is spelled C A R R I L L O. I'm also on Instagram with the same uh, handle as well. And uh, I'm on LinkedIn also. You can just find me on LinkedIn under my name there. Great. Um, Great. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, Kevin, thank you again. And, you know, audience, it's now it's your turn to speak into uh, the, the pain points that he mentioned. And I, he just had so many. Uh, I hate to overuse this. because I think so many podcasters talk about value bombs, but there was so much good information that was shared during this this interview and I encourage you to go to biztrack.io and sign up for the service. Um, matter of fact, hit pause right now and just go do it. Just go, go sign up for the, for the, the site. And just like, we want you to help build the community at rising tide. We want you to help build the community at biz track. And, and this is, these are much needed services. And I just really appreciate the business model and the, and the thought and the ideas behind that. So we want to make sure that we're helping feed, feed into that. But, uh, so it's your turn, audience, and like we say every every episode, that uh, as your feedback comes in and as we help build this community, that it, you're just playing your part in helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Kevin, thanks again. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Kevin. <clears throat>